Okay, now this is the last problem some of you guys had trouble with. Look at these two problems. So here, first one. The radius of a sphere, the radius of a sphere, sphere, is multiplied by 4. What, does, what effect does this have on the volume of a sphere? So once again, look how I start off. With a formula that's given, not memorized. You never have to memorize it. It will always be given, I promise. So here, volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's what the little 3 means. So now, if I take that radius and multiply it by 4, what happens to this formula now? So instead of having a single r, now I have 4 r. So r becomes 4 r. Now put that into the given equation. So the volume now equals 4 thirds pi. Now my r becomes 4r because it's been multiplied by 4. r cubed. So look, what's going to happen if I simplify this here? So now I'll have, use another color, let's see. Now I'll have what? 4 thirds pi. But then now I have 4 cubed and r cubed. So what is 4 cubed equal? I'm gonna carry the three. 64. So I have 64 r cubed, good old delicious pi, and then 4 thirds. Now if you look at this and this, what's the difference? There's only one difference now. Something happened to my formula. Look, that one glaring difference right here. Look at that. So remember, remember, multiplication is commutative. So I can rewrite this like this. 64 times 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now look, isn't this what I have right up here? The only difference is now I have got a 64 in front of it. So this is the effect that multiplying the radius by 4 has on the sphere. It multiplies the volume, the volume by 64. Now for the second problem, the size of a rectangular rectangular prism are all multiplied by, uh, there's no number here. I'll just say they're all multiplied by 3. What effect does this have on the surface area, surface area of the prism? Once again, another formula you don't have to memorize. You're welcome. Here, it's 2LW, length times width, plus 2LH, length times height, plus 2WH, W, W, width times height. Now, I'm going to multiply all these sides by 3, the length, the width, and the height. So let's see what happens. But before I do that, I want to see if I can simplify this equation as it is. So look, they both have 2 in common. Algebra time. Let's go ahead and pull out a 2 from everything. 2 parentheses. Now I have LW plus LH plus WH. There. So let's see what's going to happen if I multiply all these measurements by... Three. So now I have to do two parentheses, three L multiply by three, three W multiply, and then plus three L times three H plus three W times three H. Now simplify algebra. Whee! So now three times three is nine. So I have, I have. 9LW plus 3 times 3, 9LH plus 3 times 3, 9WWH. So now, once again, good old algebra. Let's take out what they have in common. A 9. So now it's 2 times, now he has a friend on the outside, 9. Then I have LW. That's too many U's on my W. Get rid of that. LW plus LH plus WH. So now look, on the outside I have 9 times 2, which is 18. LW plus LH plus WH. 
Now, if I look at the original equation compared to what I have now, what's the difference? I have 18 on the outside, two on the outside in the original. So compare these two. How do we get from two to 18? We multiplied by what? Nine. So what that means is the surface area of the new prism is going to be nine times bigger. Yay.